Jimmy Sunday. Let's go. Hardest working man. I'm down here, down here filming as well. Unfortunately, I'm running out of batteries, so. And then this is my father. Can you see the similarities? An inspiration, I think. We were separated at birth and shipped steal overseas. From the, steal from the best, <laughs> Tree, 
And glancing at the phylogenetic tree as a very small child, it made sense how these things were obviously, it's just like Sesame Street, one of these things is not like the other. It's, it's so easy to piece together. <laughs> and nobody else got it. I mean, I've had people tell me, well, you know, the way you classify things doesn't make any sense. I mean, you may as well say that an octopus is an ink pen since they both produce ink. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand how they can do their, their categorization. You don't realize that a cat and a dog are closer together than a, than a, a dog and a cow, really? <laughs> I got into um, a group called Talk.Origins, and the advantage there was that I had people that were very well versed in science, and I had people that were supposedly very well versed in religion. I wasn't going for the cheap shot, the easy target that they, they, they challenge uh, Dawkins for. I mean, I'm going for the very best that anybody can put forth, and I found out there isn't one. There's nobody that can put up an argument. And I said, well, just tell me, what is the reason that you believe? And I was shocked to find out that there was not one. I have gotten many people to tell me that, uh, well, these may be what the facts are, but I prefer to believe this. And it was shocking to me that people will tell me that, that I, I believe this way because I want to, because it makes me feel good, because I like this, because it has community. And it nothing to do with whether or not you actually think it's true. And then when you pressure some of these people in these, whether it's an online debate or it's a personal debate, in some cases you can get them up into a corner and, and they get to a point where they have to concede some critical error and they're forbidden to concede that error. And when you get to a point where you, you can't admit any mistake and you can't defend it either, it causes a sort of a psychological meltdown. My position does not. If you prove me wrong on any point, and people have, several times. I correct it and I improve and eventually I will thank the person that corrected me and my perspective improves. And that's what science does. It takes out everything that is wrong one thing at a time through process of elimination weeds truth out of falsity. Religion doesn't. Now most of us were talking about atheism in the sense that is May, may as well be synonymous with rationalism or empiricism or something like that. Of course, as has been said, atheism is simply the lack of a belief of God. It's those who are not convinced that a God must necessarily exist. I didn't know that I was atheist for, well, I was atheist and didn't know it for 15 years because I had been convinced that atheists were people who don't believe in anything, meaning you don't believe in anything spiritual, you don't believe, you may as well be nihilist. Maybe all of it is an illusion. Or I was told that uh, atheists know there is no God. And I don't believe in Gnosticism. I don't believe in, uh, in stating that I know what I know no one even can know. That to me is dishonest. And so I, I look at the things that people believe and how they're starting to put all of this in schools. And somebody was talking to me about how their church uh, they're you know, part of this huge coalition that had successfully positioned all these judges and senators and other, other people in positions of power. And this is when they started explaining to me how they're going to overturn the country through this wedge strategy. And that's when I decided to become an, a, an activist myself. And it started with online debates and discussions and then carried on. And I ended up getting into... Uh, uh, debates with people that were courting the Board of Education. And finally, uh, none of that was pan out. You can't reach these people. They, uh, religion has this uh, basis of, they, they, the purpose of it is to make believe. And where I come from, we call that pretend. <laughs> but that is the goal. And you can't question the conviction. You have to force yourself to believe it. And some people have actually told me that that is their perspective. They have to make themselves, force themselves to accept, even when they know it's not right, because they have this requirement. And so I realize, oh, okay, here's, this, uh, here's May thinking that, uh, that if you accept evolution, it means you have to reject God. And why does this happen? Because his God is not independent of Scripture. There's another foundational falsehood. He can't distinguish doctrine from deity. If you disprove the Bible, it does not disprove God. If you disprove the Vedas, it does not disprove God. So there's another falsehood there. So 
I started piecing together these arguments that I kept seeing again and again and again, because there's not many. I mean, it, we've talked about Ray Comfort a hell of a lot. He's managed to make multi-million dollars and has a nice house close to the beach uh, using the same lame argument for 10 years. It doesn't change it. He, he's written several books. They all rehash the same thing. He's got this one argument he keeps saying, and that's what I get when I debate these people. It's the same thing again and again. So I've taken concise points to do a video series disproving each one of these things. I mean, if you ever debated with any creationist, I mean, you always hear, well, how come there's no transitional species, for example? And then you have to go out and you have to provide a list, which everyone individually will be denied because, simply because they have to be denied. So I had to come up with something to show that there is a definition, these things match the definition, these people know that it matches the definition, and they're lying about it anyway. Then I was talking to somebody who went to church with my daughter in South Texas where they told, their, they told the congregation that dinosaurs did not exist. They're that extreme. These are the people that, uh, that, that often deny medical care because they can pray it away. This happens in Texas a lot. And one of these people challenged me to prove, or she said that I could not prove, <coughs> evolutionism. <laughs> and I said, well, yes, as a matter of fact, I can. And not only that, not only will I prove, to even to your satisfaction, that biological evolution is the truest, best explanation there is for the origin of our species, and that it is the only explanation of biodiversity with either evidentiary support or scientific validity, and that there is no other alternative that meets the, any of the criteria of a scientific theory. But I will also prove that everything creationism has taught you about evolution was a lie, and not just that it's wrong, but they knew it was a lie when they told it to you. And I created the Foundational Falsehoods of Series, or Foundational Falsehoods of Creationism series to that end. One of the early responses to that was that I was hurting people. <laughs> and I often get, why don't you just let me believe what I want to believe? I want to believe I'm the king of Persia. <laughs> Maybe I want to believe that that tiger is really a penguin and won't really hurt me. <laughs> to me, honesty matters. Only accurate information has practical application. And accountability matters. If you're going to teach something, make sure that you're going to teach something that is correct. And this is where we get back into Gnosticism, because these people are not just telling you that there's no transitional species when they know damn well that there are hundreds, even according to the strictest definition of that word. But they are also teaching, asserting as fact, that which is not evidently true, and that, of course, is inherently dishonest. Faith itself is inherently dishonest because faith is an unwarranted assumption that is inserted with unreasonable conviction. Now, it would be unwise to hold an absolute conviction, even when there is evidence, but we're talking about something that it is asserted with no reason to believe it at all, other than some subjective thing. Some of us have a need to believe, and others simply have a desire to understand. Those who have a desire to understand will improve their perspective, and we will find the faults and correct them. Those who have the need to believe will not correct anything and will always remain just as wrong as they started out, at least. Because, you know, it's like the game of 20 questions. Okay, from any position, any independent people can take any subject, they can start from any point. Because there is only one truth, when you weed away all of the falsehoods in your own perspective, you're going to zero in on that one and only truth. Everybody, no matter where they come from, is going to come into the same truth because there is only one. But religion, starts from there and goes that way. That's why you have thousands of denominations, all of them as wrong as they can be. The two things that I've noticed about religion is you, there's not one thing that they can say that their beliefs promote that they can show is actually true. Nothing. I can't. I can show many things that are actually true and demonstrate that, that they lied about these things. And so what it come down to is, of course, and I'm not the first person to say this, I don't know who did, so I'm going to take credit today. <laughs> Science doesn't know everything. Religion doesn't know anything. 